Okay, so now we, Tim Young, are going to present our cool app, Vacant Seat. It's a mobile app to find and book real-time vacant cafe, restaurant, or bar. With our awesome app, you will never be a seat refugee. Great. Okay, so before talking about our app, let me introduce our awesome team. So uh, I'm Yoshinori, the young start. I'm the tech lead and I was doing mainly uh, the backend using Amazon Web Services and Stripe API. And I helped some front end as well. Alex Yan Route, as well as taking care of the Amazon Cognito authentication and Stripe API, he controlled all the page routing of front end. Ryusei, uh, the Yan Map, He's a master of a Google Map API, and he built all the map features, which is an essential part of our app. And now to Jan Buck. He was taking care of not only the backend, uh, manipulating Amazon Web Services and WebSocket, but also front end and debug a lot. What a cool tip, huh? So next, Yusei is going to talk about our user story. Thank you, Yoshinori. Here we are going to talk about the vacant seat of the two users. We are going to look at the vacant seat of the two users. We are going to look at the vacant seat of the two users. We are going to look at the vacant seat of the two users. We are going to look at the vacant seat of the two users. We are going to look at the vacant seat of the two users. We are going to look at the vacant seat of the two users. 次にストアオーナーです。ストアオーナー小さなカフェを経営していて、とってもコーヒーに執着がある。こだわっている人で、とってもテックに興味があるんだけども、コロナに少し影響を受けてしまっているという方です。まずはカスタマーのユースケースについて見ていきたいと思います。カスタマー、見たところ買い物帰りみたいですね。突然なんですが皆さん、買い物帰りどこかに行きたくなりませんかどうですか皆さん。あ、聞こえてきます。あ、いいですね、皆さん。そうなんですよ。カフェ。カフェに行きたくなると思いますよね。カフェに行ってみようと、テクテクテクと歩いて行ってみて、なんと、空いていないと。まあでも、1軒目ですよ。2軒目ならね、まあ空いてるんじゃないかと。2軒目も空いていないと。これはちょっとアンラッキーですね。でもまあ、3軒目ならね、空いてるでしょうということで、行ってみてももう3軒目も空いてないと。もうそうなると皆さんどうなりますかこの女性のようにもう疲れ切ってしまいますよね。この件は少し極端なんですが、皆さんもこんなことを一度は経験したことあると思います。ですが、私たちのアプリ、ベーカンシートがあれば、近くの空いているカフェを一瞬で見つけて、そして予約もできると。とってもクールだと思いませんか次にですね、スターオーナーのユースケースについて見ていきます。スターオーナーとっても苦労をしています。悩み事がたくさん。さんありますこのパンデミックの中、さらにカスタマーが来なかった、そしてドタキャンされてしまったりして、もう、もう、心労の中、もう、ストアオーナー、こうなってしまいました。ご覧ください、もう、自慢の引きがなくなってしまいました。これは悲しい。ですが、わえることができて、100% の増加が認める、見込めるということで、この自慢のヒゲ、どうですか、回復しているのが分かると思います。とっても素晴らしいアプリですよね。要するに、ベーカンシートは、空いている席がなかなか見つけられないカスタマーと、空いている席の情報を伝えたい、このストアをつなげる、そのようなアプリになっています。さあ、皆さん、どんな、どんな感じの見た目なんだどんな感じなんだって気になっていると思います。ここで、デモタイムです。アレックス、please show our cool up, please. Great, thank you, Ryusei.、Um, hi, so my name is Alex. I'd like to wish you all a, a very happy evening.、Um, I'm here to、uh, present and demo our application, Vacant Seat, on behalf of Team Yarn. As you've heard already in the presentation, the goal of our app was to solve two very real first world problems for our personas. And the,、uh, the focus of tonight's demo. Will be on the user experience of the two types of users, that of a restaurant and that of a potential customer. So, to assist me in this,、um, 
we have uh, Naoto coming in from uh, LA with, uh, thank you, Naoto. So Naoto is uh, streaming from LA via Discord for us, and we can see his phone here, and he'll be registering as a merchant. So to explain briefly, Naoto is a, a manager of a restaurant called Rafa Chirashko in uh, Roppongi. It's a small restaurant, it's mildly successful, but Naoto is a challenger and he wants to increase his customer count and get as much occupancy as possible in his restaurant. So he signed up to vacant seat, uh, hoping to do this and hoping to drive customers into his store from our application. When he opens the app for the first time, he's greeted with a control panel where he can specify what sorts of table configuration he would like to offer to customers on our application. So in this situation, he's going to toggle on seating for one person, two people, three people, and four people. Now, uh, he's a little risk adverse. So what he wants to do is he wants to take advantage of our deposit feature, whereby he can charge a small deposit fee for booking the table that the customer can get back at the end during billing time. Um, this just makes sure that if someone makes an anonymous booking and doesn't show up, he's not out of pocket. So let's go ahead and put some deposits on the larger tables, the size three and four tables. Thank you. And that's all he has to do. Now he has some tables available to find and search for on vacancy for customers. Now, halfway across Rapongi, around Rapongi Hills, I've just finished work and I've caught up with two of my friends. Uh, it's a busy Thursday night. The restaurants are packed. We've gone to two restaurants and we couldn't get in. We've gone to a third restaurant and they've said, we can get you in in 30 minutes, maybe. So my other friends are starting to look at their phones, searching on Google for nearby restaurants to call. But we don't have to do that because fortunately, recently I started using vacancy. So I'm just going to log in and show my friends this wonderful new application that I've been using. So what happens when we log in is we're immediately greeted with a map view with various restaurants nearby that are available on vacancy and have vacancies currently. And there are quite a few of them, uh, but they don't necessarily all meet my specific requirements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter to find my specific requirements. So first of all, it's actually only for three people that we care about. And second of all, we're looking for a place for dinner so we, we don't really care about cafes or bars. We only really care about restaurants. Lastly, we've been walking around a lot already trying to find a place. So uh, I could look up to five kilometers away, but really I'm just gonna stick to the default of about 2.5 kilometers. So let's just filter for those options. And then we see that we have a reduced number of restaurants now on the map. And all of them, however, are relevant to my search. I can click on individual locations and it can tell me about something. Hmm, pancakes. I don't know how I feel about pancakes. And I could carry on to click on other pins, but handily at the bottom, there is a uh, roulette swiper where I can just swipe through, look at all the possible options that are on the map, and then pick what appeals to me the most. And lo and behold, I found this wonderful Brazilian restaurant that I think I've been to before. Um, it's uh, pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and book there. When it loads up, I see some more details about the restaurant. I see its contact details. I see its precise address, just so I can double check that I'm confident to go there. I can see its opening and closing hours, and I can see what sort of configurations they have. So at this point, if another friend showed up, I could book for four as well, because he has a four seat table available. But in this case, we don't. So I'm just going to select a table for three. Oh, but I see something. There's a deposit fee, 300 yen, but it's just a deposit and I've already been looking at restaurants and not being able to get in. So I'm fed up. I just want to get a seat for my friends and I to catch up. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now it brings up a uh, reservation card, confirming it's for three people, confirming the deposit amount and asking me to supply a custom name for the reservation. So it's just going to be tonight for Yarn, which is my teammates and I. I'm going to go ahead and book that. Now, because there's a deposit fee, I'm going to be required to enter my credit card details. If it was for one of the other tables, such as the counter space for one person or the table for two, it would take me straight through to a booking. But uh, please uh, avert your eyes for a moment while I put in my uh, credit card details. Oh, 
Almost there. Give me one second. Okay, great. So now my uh, order is being processed. And if you look over to the merchant view, as it gets processed instantly, Nato is given a confirmation notification that a new booking for three people has just been made at 8.23 in the evening and that the customer has until 8.53 to arrive and that that customer has paid a 300 yen deposit. So they're most likely to be coming. So he can click that off and then instantly also notice that the three table, the three person table configuration has been automatically toggled off as a safety feature. This just prevents uh, Nauto from getting too many bookings for tables he may not have in the future. Maybe he's very busy and he doesn't have time to look at the app. But if he does have time, he can confirm, he can review his situation, and then he can decide to re-toggle on if he has an available space, which he does. He's just done that. Over on my screen, over in Rapongi Hills, I have a new type of map. I don't have a map with all the available restaurants in the area anymore. Instead, I have a map with just the restaurant I made a reservation for. And I have a route for the most efficient way to get there on foot. Further down the screen, if you notice, there is a timer. And that is the 30 minute timer that's triggered once the booking is made. Essentially, I have to get to the restaurant within that time if I expect the restaurant to mandatorily honor the booking. Now, if I'm running late or my friend's running late or you're with kids and they're just not able to move as quickly, there is a launcher to make a phone call to the restaurant. So you can just say, hey, um, I made this booking under the name Team Yarn. We're running a bit late, it's raining, but we will be there. So please hold the table for us. But we're not gonna do that just now because there's not time in the demo. Um, additionally, you'll see there's more details about the booking. And finally, there is a QR check-in button. So imagine that I've arrived at the restaurant. I go to the front desk. I see Nauto who's working as concierge tonight. And I say, hi, I'm uh, the booking for Yarn via vacant seat. I'd like to check in. And he will then go and choose his QR page. And that is a custom QR code for his restaurant and for this booking. And what I can do is I can then use the button on my screen to scan and check in. And that stops the clock and confirms that I've arrived. So finally, if I've already arrived and I forgot to check in or I was greeted by another staff member and I'm already seated, Nauta doesn't have to come and see me to check in. He can just go to the transactions page, manually check me in, or if I haven't arrived on time, haven't tried to contact him, he can cancel my order after the cutoff time. On my own screen, I have the option to review all of my historic bookings. And as you can see, I'm a big fan of that Brazilian restaurant. Um, Alternatively though, if I deleted the app from my phone and I've lost those details, luckily I have a wonderful option in that every order that's placed is supplied with a email to the registered account confirming all the details of that order. So I have that record in my email long-term if I desire. So that completes the basic flow of the app from both users' perspectives. Now I will uh, happily just uh, log out of the system and pass you over to Nauto, who is going to tell you about all the technologies we use to make this wonderful application. Thank you. All right, thank you, Alex. That was a great demo. And I'll be talking about some of the technologies that we use for vacancy, and as well as following up with the challenges and struggles that we had in the development. So starting off with front end, we use Dart Flutter. Uh, the main reason is because we deployed this on Android, and as well as in the future, we would like to de deploy this on iOS as well. Now, we also use AWS Amplify Framework to easily perform user authentication with AWS Cognito, as well as give availabilities for the merchant side to upload images like stores or menus or food into Amazon S3 Bucket. Also, we deployed Amazon API Gateway to handle requests from the client side, as well as we have AWS Lambda with set functions to communicate with the database. And we're using Amazon DynamoDB for the database. And this is where all the customer's information, merchant's information, as well as the booking information are stored. So basically, all information are stored in this database. And the reason why we're using this structure is because we wanted to make a real-time booking system. So we integrated WebSockets 
with Amazon API Gateway, which enables that real-time booking system. So that is the basic technology that we use for vacant seat. Now moving on to the APIs, we have two key APIs that we use. One is Google Map. Um, the reason is because it's most familiar with the user, so it's really easy to onboard users to use the map, as well as we needed the current location and the distance information as shown in the demo by Alex when he was searching for the Rafa Churrasco restaurant. So he was filtering by the distance, as well as uh, the route display was needed. Um, he, in the demo, Alex showed that once he was booked the vacant seat, a uh, new map was generated with the route to the actual venue from his current location. Now we also have a payment feature and we use Stripe to perform that. And the reason why we use Stripe is because it was quick to deploy and specifically we're using Stripe Connect. And the key reason why we were using Stripe is because we're our target of the stores are in Japan with Japanese bank accounts. So Stripe enables the setup and linkage to their bank accounts to receive those funds from the customers. Now challenges and struggles. So I'll be talking about two technical challenges and one non-technical challenge. We had more, but those are the three keys. And one is Flutter and Amplify. So Amazon provided a, a SDK for Amplify that works with Flutter. However, it was released in August, 2020. So it was fairly new. So it was a little bit difficult to find documentation that really fits our use case. So what we did was we simply dived into many, many documentation examples and research through and step by step and line by line, we just constructed a fully working application with Flutter and Amplify. Next is real time fees. So I've been talking about this, but um, this is the essential feature of our application. So it was new for everyone. So we needed to decide on what kind of technology we'll be using for the real time feed. And we decided to use WebSockets. And we also integrated this with Amazon API Gateway, which was a little bit complicated. But then again, same thing. We just went through a lot of documentations and set up this line by line. And I'm proud of the team that we were able to make a fully working real-time booking system. And for non-technical challenges, this always comes to any project but time management. Yes. So, and especially for this project, we only had one month to build a full stack application. And so we really needed to be organized. And what, what kind of action we took was we used communication tools like Slack and integrating with GitHub to get real-time notifications, as well as, as well as we use GitHub features such as the Kanban boards to be transparent as we can within the team's tasks. So we were able to know who was doing what kind of task and what, ta what task was behind. So that really helped us on facilitating our communication process. So those three key challenges and struggles what happened in our development phase. And in the next slide, um, Yoshinori will be talking about the future features. All right, thanks Naudo. So yeah, we had a month to create our app from scratch and we are super proud of it. But uh, don't you wanna uh, look at the awesome version two of our app? I'm sure you do, right? So let's look at the future features. Rating. So this feature enables customers to give rating and comments to the stores uh, so that they can filter by everyone's rating. And also the stores can uh, improve their services by hearing customers' comments. Uh, watch list. With this feature, uh, customers can register favorite stores uh, from the map, even if the stores are not vacant now. And after that, they can receive a real-time notification when the store make a vacancy. And sharing is scary. If we meet up with a friend at a cafe or find a really cool place, we want to share that information with friends, right? This feature enables customers to share store details and vacancy information easily on social media or common communication tools like Line. Right. OK. So uh, that's all from us. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. The QR code on the left side is for our Google Play Store. The latest version is currently in the review process by Google and will be out really soon. And on the right side, we have our GitHub link. So feel free to uh, scan and explore there. So looking for a vacancy? Here you have our vacancy.
Thank you for listening.